Hello, you're joining me today in the Cortina. It's quite a while since I was in it. I have been doing a bit of work on it this morning, but that's for a video to come later on in the new year. You'll see that one as soon as I finish getting it all ready. I'm trying to get the Cortina up and running for next summer, for the next summer season, and also so I can use it and enjoy it as well. However, that's not the reason for today's video. Since how so many of you seem to love um, the last video I did on revealing the new car that I bought, the Mondeo, I thought I'd do a quick update on the history of it. You won't believe some of the stuff in the history of the Mondeo. Now, it's a 1995 car on an M registration, and the first seven years of its history appear to be missing. I don't have those, so I'm assuming it's had one or two owners in the first seven years of its life. Now, if you're anything like me, you remember years ago, long time ago, it seemed to be normal for people to document everything that they did on the vehicle. My uncle, for example, back in the days when he had a Mark II 1600E Cortina, he used to take notes of every little thing that was done at the car, the services that was done. He even wrote down every time he put petrol in the car, what the mileage was when the petrol went in, what the mileage was when he put more petrol in. Uh, I believe, or at least I think, he used to try and work out how many miles he was getting to the gallon as it was back then. Anyway, that's something that you don't seem to hear an awful lot of these days. But the owner of the Mondeo, or one of the previous owners of the Mondeo, certainly made a note of the majority of the stuff he had done in the car. Some of it's really surprising. So while you listen to me rattle on about the history of the Mondeo and some of the unbelievable stuff that's in there, I'll throw some pictures into the video so you can see how it looks and get a more detailed and a better look at it than maybe I gave in the last video. Uh, I'm aware the last video was a little bit sort of rushed in doing the look around and the walk around the car. So I'll throw some photos in and I'll go through the history. So the first entry in the history that I've got with the car is from November 2002. Now at that particular time, the engine was fully rebuilt by the looks of it. Everything that was done, it had new bearings, new pistons, a timer belt, uh, the, board, the block was rebored, the crankshaft was reground, the cylinder head was, uh, was refaced, new valve seats, uh, the conrods were resealed, it was balanced, and the cylinder heads were rebuilt and put back together. Now, back in 2002, that came in at £774 or thereabouts for one of the previous owners. So whether that was because the timing belt had snapped at that time or whether there was something else wrong with the engine, um, I'm guessing, and I'm, it's just a guess, but I'm guessing that the timing belt snapped at that point. Uh, I think it had somewhere around 110,000 miles on it. So at around about the same time as well, it also had a new starter motor. So... The starter motor had failed and the engine had failed. Not exactly sure why. I'm guessing it would have been, maybe the two were related or there weren't, may have been a time about that snapped. But that was at about 110,000 miles back in 2002 when that was done. Then in August 2009, it had a tow bar fitted. That was £160. And then in January 2012, there was another time and belt done. And that was at 150,000 miles. So that's, a, that's the second replacement time and belt. So it's now on its fourth time and belt. Hasn't been changed since 2012. It's only done 21,000, 22,000 miles since the last belt was changed. However, it was over 12 years. Well, it was nearly 12 years ago now and that has changed. So that's probably something I'm going to be looking to get done as soon as I possibly can. Then in January 2015, there was another starter motor. Now, I don't know whether the prices changed and came down a little bit or it was just a cheaper starter motor, but the one that was put on around about 2002 was £192. The one that was fitted in 2015 was £178. All these prices are on quote on the receipts and they do include VAT as well. So the price fluctuation isn't due to the VAT that was added on at the time. And then after the starter motor was done, back in June 2015, it had new brake pipes and new flexi hoses all around the car. Um, a front spring and caliper was changed on uh, in June of 2017, which personally I find a bit strange. If I was changing a spring, I would do a pair of springs at the front. If I was changing a caliper, I'd do a pair of calipers, working on the theory that if one's gone, the other one can't be far behind it when it's going to go. So uh, save any imbalance in the, the driving or the handling characteristics. I would have changed them all as a pair. Now, in February of 2018, it had uh, new hydraulic lifters fitted, but that's all that was done at the time according to the documentation that I've got. And following on from that, in March of 2018, it did have a pair of front springs and a pair of front calibers. So it's demolished two lots of springs and two lots of calibers by the looks of it. And then in um, February 2018, sorry, in April 2018, was a new exhaust fitted. That was 80 quid. Uh, the springs and calibers that were fitted were £192 in March, and in the February hydraulic lifters were 320 quid. Obviously quite an involved job there, 
strip there, stripping the engine apart and putting the new lifters in. And then finally, as far as the documentation, the documentation I've got is concerned, in July of 2018, there was £600 worth of welding done to the chassis at the back. It was undercoated, and it was painted rather, and then it was undercoated. It's been under sealed. I've checked under the car briefly, and everything still seems to be perfectly okay in there. So a professional job for the welding, which seems to have lasted well so far. And that's all the history I've got on the car. Uh, the only other thing uh, worthy of, of mentioning, if you're interested in the, in the history of the Mondeo, is that currently it's sitting at just over 171,000 miles. So on average, it's 28 years old since it was registered. So on average, it's done roughly 6,000 miles a year. So it's been a low mileage car, if you look at it that way. Obviously, depending on recent and previous owners and how many miles they've done, it could have done 15,000 one year and maybe 4,000 the following year. But it's certainly, if you average it out, it's only done 6,000 miles per year, bringing up to a total of a little over 171,000 miles now. So in total then, over the 16-year period from 2002 till 2018, it had £3,154 spent on it adding to the overall total cost of the vehicle to start with. Now, I've got no documentation on how much the previous owner, any previous owners have paid for the car when they've bought it, or how long they've kept it. Certainly, the owner that I got it off seems to have had it for about a year. So it looks as though it was MOT'd not long before he bought it, and he's had it for about a year. And now it's MOT'd until June of this year, so about a year and a half, a year, a year to a year and a half. The previous owner must have had it. Uh, he certainly seems to have enjoyed using it, and of course I'm going to enjoy using it. Now, it's been a few days it's been on the road for, and the one or two things I've noticed about it when I'm driving it at the minute is that there's a, an annoying rattle on the front of the car just as you pull away from junctions. So I don't know whether something's a bit loose at the front. It seems to be coming from the front of the bumper area somewhere. Uh, everything's fine under the car. It's not something that's affecting any of the steering or the handling of the car, but there's definitely something at the front that's really annoying but it's just as you're pulling away from junctions. So I've got a look at to see what that is. And then also the other day I was out in it and on the way back, as I went over speed ramps, there was a bit of a tire rope coming from the passenger side at the back of the car. So possibly it's going to need a pair of shock absorbers on the back. But when the weather gets a little bit better, um, I'll have a look at that and see what that's like. Well, actually, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but it's really windy today. Today's Christmas Eve. And uh, so I'm just catching up on videos before the end of the year. A couple more to come out before the year ends, but I thought I'd catch up on a bit of a history of the Mondeo because everybody seemed to love the Mondeo so much when I did the first video on it. Um, thank you for supporting the channel and watching the video as often as you all did. And of course, I want to say a big thank you and a hello to all the new subscribers. Had a whole bunch here lately. Uh, according to the statistics on uh, on my YouTube uh, channel, there's 12 subscribers in total that have, uh, that have decided to support the channel by subscribing. I hope you're enjoying the videos. We're running in, obviously, to the Christmas period, Christmas Day tomorrow. So hopefully, uh, if you're at a loose end, you've got nothing to do. There's a couple of hundred videos on the channel. So settle back, get yourself an adult beverage and a mince pie, and enjoy some of the videos over the next few days until I get the next one out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Merry Christmas, and have a happy new year. Bye for now.